Okay, I'm, if I could just sort of brush into this nice chat, uh, I'll do so. I just did it. Um, thanks, everybody. Welcome back. Um, hope you all enjoyed a long weekend. That's well over now. And I know some people have been sleep deprived and have been dealing with the various crises, so we, uh, I think we understand and acknowledge that. Um, thanks for lunch. It's all there. Most of you have participated in that. Um, now, many of you, except Jim and maybe a couple of others, were here last meeting. There's some positive developments, um, a proposal to consider. There is no formal agenda for today, partly because no one was sure what would happen between last meeting and today. And my understanding is, and it's been confirmed by Coquitlam, that they have prepared a sort of response to Metro's response at last meeting. Now, people had to scramble. It was a long weekend. A lot of work went into this, and not a lot of time was allowed to do so. So my understanding is um, that that briefing or sort of suggested response to the response is something that's going to need to be considered. Um, and I think we should sort of agree on the best way to go ahead and do that, because no one's seen it, obviously, from, from the Metro side, and they're going to need some time to, to consider that. And there's also the possibility that should, it, should you want to walk through that in advance of maybe caucusing and considering um, some of those suggestions. So maybe I'll just stop there and see if people want to um, suggest how they might want to best use the time and maybe uh, Richard can start us off. Well, I only want to begin by uh, a little bit of a background. We did receive this course on, on Thursday, uh, Wednesday, Wednesday evening. Um, uh, Thursday we uh, poured over. Friday was of course a holiday and Monday is our council day. We were trying to finalize it last night when um, we received word that uh, of a near calamity or Serious calamity actually on the Fraser River, uh, a line, uh, serious power line between uh, Coquitlam and Surrey, and collapsed into the river and it uh, necessitated the closure of the freeway, Port Manager, Lowy Highway, and essentially all of the transportation in the middle of the region um, uh, indefinitely until we solve that. I've been up all night actually. This is the same suit I wore at City Council yesterday, and so sorry about this, mate, but uh, I haven't showered it either. And, um, <laughs> but um, but yeah, so we had fully intended to get this to you yesterday. Uh, so that was the way we tried to do it, uh, to give you enough time to review it. Um, and our, so my apologies that we weren't able to do that in the, the two business days that we were, we were important. Um, so we do have it here at the beginning of the meeting. And um, we do want to uh, certainly thank Metro for the starting point, the uh, discussion about the was presented on Thursday afternoon, Wednesday afternoon, I apologize. And um, I'm going to say personally as well, uh, I am a little bit tired right now, and I probably won't be participating too much in the debate, and I also have two or three issues that we're still uh, working through with, but we're not able to step out for, the I promise, almost certainly will have to step out for, uh, and I'll be here as much as I possibly can. Uh, but I suspect that most of the debate at this point, uh, or discussion at this point, will be very technical and related to wording and uh, 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 or the proposals that uh, we come, come back with. All right, thanks, Richard. I don't know if there's a, there's anything to respond to, because I'm thinking methodology of going through this, whether you just want to uh, sort of read it and go through it privately, or sort of be walked through it and then consider. There's a number of ways to go about doing that, but obviously you've got to get your hands on it pretty soon, right? Well, first of all, I think we should be given a copy of it. And uh, secondly, uh, once we have a chance to read it, then we will be more responsive to what you ask. It's, it's hard to say. But, you know, Selena? Thank you. Um, my thought is, uh, given the fact that Johnny last time sort of walked us through their document, I think it would be just appropriate to walk you through our document. Um, so that we can explain how we got to where we got to, and then we can caucus. Um, that's a good place to to start. Okay, so the first point is certainly get the document out there, um, and the suggestion is let's walk through it and then consider. Do you need private time to go and consider it, uh, or can you just move right into a discussion? So, um, yes, Scott's available. I think um, John has provided some. 
How are we doing for copies? Do we need to run off and run, run some more? There seems to be a bunch of stack here.
in effect after the LRSP was, was uh, prepared and adopted. So that, that would be our preference. Um, however, um, sort of building on what was discussed last week, uh, some of the proposals um, there and through, I think, in the discussion itself, um, it was, um, the idea of a series of workshops. So that's on page three, our points one and two. Um, would be what we'd be proposing. Um, but, uh, by way of a uh, implementation agreement, I guess combined with uh, possibly um, amendments to Metro's procedure of bylaw, uh, you could have those those triggers or those uh, requirements for the review of the RGS and more regular basis. Um, the next point was around the workshops, and this is I guess a way of um, building knowledge and allowing input to that process. So ultimately, came for um, to the regional planning committee and then onto the board that would be uh, assisted and informed by that that, uh, that input from not only just the uh, uh, the staff, but uh, um, but also from other uh, stakeholders as well that had been involved in the uh, the preparation of the RGS. So giving them that opportunity to input. So in the end, what went forward to the board would be uh, hopefully a, uh, a well-informed, uh, comprehensive piece to allow board to make a, uh, an informed decision. So that's, that's the proposal. Um, uh, again, this was mentioned would be through a, a, a implementation agreement. Um, in that, uh, um, possibly there's some combination of those two. Uh, if there's a, uh, a willingness to actually incorporate that into the RGS, not necessarily now, but maybe in time, um, but supplemented or, or um, augmented by these other, uh, other processes laid out there. Moving over to page four. Questions so far, everybody okay? Just keep going. Okay. Moving on to page four, this is uh, objection two, and this uh, relates to proposal three, and uh, and I recall myself from our, um, our June 16th meeting that there was some uh, uh, some good headway made on this, on this uh, Item and I think there was uh, sort of a, an understanding or a meeting of minds about uh, some metrics and, and reporting uh, for monitoring the uh, implementation and administration of the RGS over time. Um, our point here is that really um, the RGS is a, a new and improved regional plan, so we're moving into a new regional planning era. Uh, it's a whole new world, so we need to make sure that. Uh, in this, uh, this new era that we are being uh, efficient, effective, and uh, the plan is actually achieving what uh, it uh, sets out to accomplish. So some sort of monitoring um, is recommended. But what we've done here is taken from our original proposal um, using uh, to a, an annual performance measures report. Um, right now, Metro does do an annual reporting um, around the RSP, and the, the intent would be to carry on with that with the new RGS. It's just to um, flesh that out so it's a more fulsome, um, I guess, rigorous sort of monitoring of the, uh, the plan over time. So I won't read each of the points, but that's what's listed there in points one to, one to five. Uh, combined with the, um, the request for opportunity for member municipalities to uh, ask Metro to come out and uh, make presentations and uh, um, answer questions around that. that. That too would be uh, material that could be input it to the board so they're aware of what's, uh, what the members uh, are, are thinking. You know, it's not just the, the board members themselves, but the, the full councils of the uh, member municipalities. Um, as an aside, I think that also went to know these more work for, for Johnny and crew, but uh, I think it, it, that's helpful in, in, in strengthening the relationships around the region and you know, getting out and actually having some face-to-face -face time with the councils. So, um, that's our proposal number, number three there. Um, Objection three, and this relates to proposal four. This was the uh, trying to uh, make an advance about a uh, dispute resolution process. Um, uh, on this one, uh, I think the discussion at the last meeting, though I wasn't here, my understanding was that uh, um, it was sort of noted as part of the record um, uh, around uh, Whitlam's concerns in this regard, and it would just be part of the record that uh, uh, we feel there should be. Uh, Further thought and effort made in this area, but um, beyond that, we would let that one go. Um, our objections four and five, and this relates to our proposals five and six, 
and the values stand from the uh, both from the material from um, the uh, Metro's brief from last week and uh, what I'm told from the discussion at the last meeting that there seems to be a willingness to uh, proceed on that. And uh, with that as our um, proposal in bold type there in the middle of page five that uh, refer it back to TAC. Um, I'm sure my colleagues will be pleased. And um, what we were suggesting there is that rather, I think the, the metro proposal was, uh, and I'm, I'm honored uh, to be entrusted with that uh, responsibility again, but I'm not sure that would be the, the most um, productive, uh, uh, fair uh, chairing. Um, so I think it's more appropriate to, and again, it's, it's, it's kind of hinted at in, in the metro uh, counter proposal, whether it would be some uh, limited um, assistance in, in uh, facilitating that process. So uh, our suggestion there is would be chaired by a qualified third party facilitator um, to help uh, the, the planning directors and TAP members uh, come to grips with this. Uh, I think it's uh, as, as much as it would be difficult for me to, to step back into that role, I think it would be equally challenging for um, other TAP members. I have a huge respect for our current chair and our, our vice chair and plus all the other members. Um, but I think it puts them in a, in a difficult position in leading that sort of discussion. So I think we've been set up by having a, an outside, you know, well-respected, knowledgeable uh, facilitator help uh, help guide that discussion and hopefully get some uh, um, serious welcome. That's, um, if that's acceptable, that, that too could be uh, incorporated in the implementation agreement and that would address our proposals five and six. Um, very briefly, um, we um, refer to Section 868 of, of the LGA implementation agreements are the vehicle, the recognized vehicle to, um, to deal with the implementation and administration of uh, regional growth strategies. Um, they are been used around the province, in fact, as I mentioned before, with the, uh, the LRSP uh, with Metro. Uh, so that's, that would be our, our um, proposal there is if we can uh, come to a sort of agreement principle around these points today. Um, we then take that away and, and, and draft up an implementation agreement. The last paragraph is around next steps, and I think we'll come back to that uh, once the, uh, the full discussion has been had, and I would trust that Jamie would help us uh, uh, come to an agreement on where we go from here. Okay. Um, yeah, Mr. Chair, I think uh, um, unless there's anybody with a Particularly pressing question. My suggestion is allow us to go caucus uh, in the time we've actually we'll go speak privately now and, uh, and come back. Okay, well, good luck. See you soon. Thanks. Well, thanks. Yeah. 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 Celebratory yeah. drink after yeah. you come to consensus. Staff refers to Metro Band staff, but it is with um, input from 
from TAC. Um, you know, a long serving TAC member, um, we participate in discussions, provide um, input and, and feedback to Metro Mass staff. Sometimes we go on record and, and actually pass by way of a, um, a resolution that goes up to RAC. So it's actually the TAC that's speaking on a point. So we just want to make sure both of those bases are covered. I take it that the words, when you say support, it's, it's really analyze, isn't it? You agree to analyze member reviews, so it reviews and amendments through the requirements of staff and type. Isn't that what you mean? Support the discussion, not support the position. If there's wording we need to work for that, we can, as, as mentioned, it was a pretty limited time for our response. Well, right. I, the point I'm trying to make is you, 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 you're agreeing to look, take a hard look at it by staff and tech, not not that you'll come to any particular conclusion. So to support right. a fruitful and informed discussion on the issues raised by the Analyze the discussion? No, 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 no. no. But Agree to analyze member municipal initiated for RGS reviews and amendments to the requirements of the staff and tech. The, the key point, I think, is that I support your meaning Accommodating process, yeah, yeah, no, support the, the, the intent of the amendment. Correct. So, 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 so if we can, if, if, if we agree to everything else when we come to the word, word. Yeah. 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 if we capture that thing, yeah, you're one mind about the meaning of this, and words better that. Okay, good. Okay, so I think we're all on the same page there, and uh, I think that was all on that page. Uh, on page four. Um, I, I think this is another small point. I think these are all fairly small points, but just to take them up. Under number one, spending on implementing, etc., including staff consulting legal and all of the resources. Uh, I take it that what you're looking for is an analysis of you know how many staff are working on this, for what proportion of the time, and how many FTEs does this come out to, etc. You're not suggesting that there would be an actual time recording system within Metro Vancouver that they would have to adhere to. And, you know. So it's just a, it's just generally, how many FTEs are, are being dedicated? See, that knows what you want, right? Yeah. We can, I mean, obviously for the regular staff who work on this on a representing full time basis, that's, that's fine. But for folks like me, I don't, I don't want to start on time accounting. Yeah. I don't know. A burning issue and a burning issue is the other one here. But I remember when you came to our council a couple of times, and one of the big issues was how much more staff we were going. That was a concern to our taxpayers. So how much more is this going to cost the taxpayers? And you said it wasn't. It was going to be done within the constraints of what you have now. And we're just, we want to have something that shows that we're going to have to happen, not just our citizens, but everybody. I've got um, three more questions from page five, and then I want to get into a discussion of, uh, of process. The first question is that uh, the provision of a third party facilitator. Now, that discussion, when we're talking about this process, consumed a whole lot of time uh, and eggs. Um, and so, I guess the question is, how is a third party facilitator going to be more effective than the usual leadership of TAC within the group? Uh, how is that going to work better? Because um, there's a great deal of, uh, of knowledge that is and experience that is necessary to, uh, you know, to guide and lead and facilitate within that group. Yes, um, and again, um, with, with all due respect to my, my TAC colleagues, um, you know, there is that uh, you know, an expertise there, certainly. Um, the, the suggestion here, again, I, I touched on this in my, my opening remarks, is uh, um, I think it would be difficult to make up to the trust me in that role, um, you know, given the, the process we've gone through. Um, but also, I think equally, <coughs> other TAC members, there may be some awkwardness there. Um, 
but also too, I'm just thinking that we did struggle with this. We, we wrestled with this uh, uh, at the TAC working group, and, and just simply to go back to that same setup again um, and expect a different outcome, um, maybe a little, little misguided. So, you know, again, I think we would benefit and be assisted by bringing in someone that can help us in having those discussions and maybe sort of prodding us. It's not trying to settle a disagreement, it's just trying to help us find some, uh, some common ground, some ideas there. So we, we, we think that would be beneficial. Um, Shouldn't we leave the process to the TAC working group? I mean, let them, so I mean, if they, they feel the need for a third party facilitator, wouldn't we let, let them do it? Tony, do you want to pick up on that? Yeah, yeah that's where I was going to. I mean, I mean, TAC and RAC and all those committees deal with pretty difficult and controversial issues all the time. And they're aligned and you know kind of every next type of chair chairs but if if the chair is from a particular spot and has a particular difficulty then you can step out of the chair and speak with the chair and, and do whatever he wants they, 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 i don't think they kind of when they come to a particularly difficult issue say well we better get a neutral chair an outside chair to do this and they will spend money on it probably they trust each other enough i think uh, uh malcolm's suggestion that if we if we actually leave it to TAC, if TAC felt they needed a third party facilitator to, to referee this, then, then we trust their judgment to do that. If they felt that they could choose one person from amongst their uh, group who wasn't particularly kind of uh, uh, caught up in the issue of the day to chair this, then we trust that too. If we just left it to TAC to trust that. And so a third party facilitator if necessary, but not necessarily a third party facilitator. So, so the suggestion that I have is simply that we would delete those words chaired by a qualified uh, third party facilitator. Maybe maybe we could go on and we can always come back to that point. Just so I'm clear, the objections are with respect to cost and not predetermining a process that TAC can, could come up with on their own. And if they thought it would be useful, they could determine that. If not, they could go on as usual. Right. Okay? If I could, Jim, just on it, but okay, let's, let's set that aside. We hear the question. Of that, um, let's take that back. You know, cost to that. Okay. The second, the second point was, and this was in previous discussions, though I don't know. I think it may have been in the original proposal or something, or the original question, <coughs> is to put a, a time period on that. I mean, we on, on page five, same paragraph, where we talk about the third party facilitator. So in other words, it shouldn't go out into the ether and or you know have one meeting and two years later come back for another on it. Let's let's put in a, a time period of within a year. I guess it's within a year if possible or something. Um, and before we before we get to the issue of process, um, the next wording there. I just, I didn't think that there was anything being added by saying, provided that the above can be detailed to the satisfaction of both parties through an implementation agreement. Uh, the way I read that was, uh, this is, you've got to get all of this into some form of an agreement. And you're saying, if it can be, then we'll consider objections four and five to be recognized as satisfactory. Is that the way you meant it? Is that the way you meant it? Or is there some issue Coming or something more coming out of can be detailed to the satisfaction of both parties. No, I, I, I think that that could have been a preamble to the, to the letters. I'm saying, assuming all of the four, all of the rest of this can be properly wordsmith into a, an acceptable agreement to both parties, then these things are disappearing. These objections are gone. Well, you and and frankly, you did have that previously on page two. You said, uh, while well, we believe this has merit, etc. We are willing to remove this proposal contingent upon acceptance of both parties of the changes that set up below. I'm, I'm taking those kind of to be the same thing. Yeah, and, and uh, my, my apologies, we didn't have time to write a shorter proposal. <laughs> That's no problem. I'm sure. Um, okay, what that leaves is a discussion of uh, the form of process that would, you know, if, if we can agree on these points, and, and frankly, it does sound like we're pretty close. Uh, 
what kind of an agreement would we get into? Uh, implementation agreement, procedure bylaw, memorandum of understanding, et cetera, et cetera. So maybe I could have Johnny to comment on that with you. Yeah. Um, essentially, if we agree on this, what I'm seeing essentially is our agreement is that Metro Vancouver would uh, <coughs> approve the necessary procedure bylaws, resolutions, whatever is necessary to give effect to the bolded parts in your, in your uh, <coughs> proposal. And if we do that, and once we've done that, Kokola would accept the regional growth strategy. I don't think the agreement has to be any more detailed than that. There was some discussion at the last meeting about who goes first. And as I've reflected on it, we've reflected on it, we can see Kukrum saying, well, we don't want to accept the regional growth strategy in the whole way you would do this. Because once you accept it, you accept it. And you can't accept conditional on this doing that because that's not allowed. So uh, conversation with my staff um, in my usual way of asking for volunteers. And um, if there's an agreement today, we would be prepared uh, to uh, do everything we can to bring all of this, the procedure bylaws, the resolutions, what is necessary to the board on the 15th. So that you would see on the 18th, which is your next council meeting, I believe, uh, you would see whether we've done it and if we've done it, then you can safely accept the plan, and we can come forward to final readings on the 29th. And if we haven't done it, then you wouldn't accept the plan on the 18th, and you wait until we have done it, which kicks us into the summer. So it's all all the more reason why we want to make every effort. I think uh, I think we're both converging, we're both coming to the middle. It's, it's not everything in your proposal is what we would prefer to do. And I'm sure you dropped a whole bunch of stuff from your proposals that you would prefer to do and all the rest of it. But if, it's, if the essence of the agreement that we leave today with is that Metro Vancouver agrees to move forward to its meeting on the 15th of July, the necessary bylaws and resolutions to give effect to the Coquitlam proposals. And Coquitlam agrees that if that is done, you will resolve to accept the regional growth strategy soon thereafter, presumably the 18th, then I think that would be the simplest way and the most quickest way of doing it if we could get that done in that time. And me, I think you're too much of a Well, first of all, there's just a couple of comments that I'd like to make. And one is that um, I know Selena and I get to chat about this quite a bit. And for her, and I have to agree with her, that all of these changes must be in the same document, whatever they are. We don't want to be having a lawyer will you here and then put a plantation agreement here, some other form of document somewhere else. So that's the first thing. It must be a two-way binding agreement and one that no one party can alter. We can't alter it and neither can you on, on your own. That, that's really important to us because I think there's a lot of concessions here that we're both trying to agree to to move forward. Um, as to timing, I thought our staff thought that we would probably, if we could come to an agreement on the wording and the wordsmithing, which I think our lawyers and our staff can do much better than we can, um, that our staff could work on it and then um, move forward, work on it immediately. And I will let them speak to that and then get it to you and your lawyers and wordsmith, as they always love to do. And so I'll turn it over to Jim. But this is from the political perspective. This is. This is where we are. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, yes, thanks, uh, Jimmy Councilor Reed. Um, very encouraging to hear the response from the other side of the table. Um, because I, I was pretty clear in my initial presentation, and Councilor Reed just confirmed that um, we thought the implementation agreement as provided legislation would be uh, the appropriate vehicle in combination with what was being said as uh, amendments to the procedures bylaw. I think that still would be our, our preferred path. Um, there's been another writing table here, and I think we would need to go back and just have our own quick huddle 
we can't take away long on that. We don't need to be waiting. Um, but um, we can come back. And my sense is we're, we're very close here. Um, also, I understand there's a, a emergency about moving forward. And, uh, and perhaps at the end of the day, it's a sort of a division of labor. Um, we can take a shot at the uh, implementation agreement. Uh, we've turned our minds to that. And we have uh, resources we can throw at that very quickly. So we would uh, make a commitment to turn that around. Expeditiously. At the same time, if there's a procedures bylaw amendment that you know, Johnny and the other Metro staff are thinking about, you can carry on that path and you can come back and meet. Um, in, in, in terms of the, of the sequence of steps, <coughs> um, yes, it would be uh, endorsement of an implementation agreement by both parties and that in hand. Uh, the council could then go back and, and reconsider <coughs> the acceptance of the RGS now. The, the timing and dates for all that, we would, we would need to discuss uh, with the council members and the deputy city manager. But uh, we do have a sense that you know, there's a, a need to move on with this quickly, and uh, we have a critical path to do this. Um, yeah. um, Selena, May, Johnny, and I'm just going to throw another process piece. I think, regardless of the macro process, what staff do and lawyers do, and how it all turns out, I think you should have something written today and probably should be beamed up there so everybody knows what they're going away doing and agreeing to. Uh, you can get into the legal smithing later, but I do think you, you need a common document, at least recording the consensus, that you then turn that into something. That's just my suggestion, but if you want to reject it, you're welcome to. So then I think it was you, um, and Johnny, and perhaps May, if I'm just following orders, in terms of whose hand was up first. Thank you. Um, so I, I, I do appreciate the expediency with which you reviewed these proposals, and I do think, you know, we turn out some dates, and I want to make sure that we are all in agreement at this table. So I was actually going to suggest that we go away check in with each other for about 15, 20 minutes, um, and then come back and sort of take a look at some of these timelines if you just want to think that would just be helpful the next step. Okay, and I think that's a good idea. And I'm just wondering, Johnny, does, does your comment or whatever be better place now or post caucus? I, I, I think it's something that I should say now so that the could, could, could consider it um, in the caucus. Um, if we are, I mean, the, the, on implement, implementation agreements, the history of implementation agreements is, is basically when the Liverpool Region Strategic Plan was first drafted, there was no implementation authority in the legislation. So the regional authors of the RSP concluded that it should implement itself by agreements with various people. And, and, if, and, and the agreements are usually with, with provincial agencies that you know the, the Land Use Commission would behave in this way or somebody else would behave in that way. Um, and, and that's still on the table, so that, that it's still in the legislation that that's one of the prime purposes. Occasionally it's used as a, as a mechanism where all the municipalities in, in, a, in a region agree that they will implement the plan in a certain way, so they all sign off on it. Uh, the idea of a one-on-one -on -one between a region and an individual municipality is usually addressed to a specific thing within the municipality, not to the whole, not to the whole kind of policy or whatever. Um, nonetheless, if you, I mean, we could put together an implementation agreement. Uh, I don't think that would be a problem to say this is what we're going to do. We're going to pass the bylaw, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to do the other. I'm simply raising the fact that well, by the time we get that done, we'll probably actually done everything that we've got in the implementation agreement. What I'm concerned about is um, we've obviously got, there's got to be some sort of good faith in this. We're not going to pass the bylaw. Send it this day. But if in five years' time, or ten years' time, or whenever it is, that the board of the day, I mean, on the equipment side, there's no actual commitment in this in this agreement. Once you've accepted, other than to accept the original post value, there's nothing you have to do. And so it's, in a sense, whether it's binding on you or not binding on you, it doesn't matter because you have nothing to do. What we've got to do is actually commit ourselves to all these bylaw changes. And Resolutions and we will do that. But if in five, ten years' time the board of the day says, pick anything you want, because you know, I, mean, I, I, don't, I don't know why they would do it, unless they say, that, pick the metrics that says, gee, that, that, that metric just isn't working, I think we're going to change that metric to something else. The board's going to have the ability to go back and amend or do whatever it is with the resolutions that today. They can't bind the future board to say, we'll never go back and have a look at this, we'll never kind of say, Instead of this metric, we want that metric, it just doesn't make sense. So I think we would, we would, I think, again, be subject to the board passing this on the 15th. But we pass those bylaws, we pass those resolutions in good faith. If an application came along, we refer it to tech, we refer it to the staff and all the rest of it. Uh, and that's what we would 
do. Uh, but the board is going to have the ability somewhere in the, in the future to revisit that. We could legal, I don't think we could legally, but we'll, we'll, we'll get into the legal question whether they could legally tie their hands in the future more to because of these. Uh, but you, you don't do that in the sense of you can't have a perpetual agreement that no one could ever go back and say, you know, that look good at the time you worked for three or four years, but it was never really done, but we ought to revisit it. And you couldn't give an individual disparity the veto over a board's ability to go and revisit that in the future. So there's got to be some acceptance that if the board passes this, passes all these bylaws and resolutions or whatever, so it will act on it, it will act on it in good faith. Uh, but some future board somewhere down the road has to have the ability to have a look at them again uh, if they feel feel that's necessary. I think that's the same with past your bylaws. Say this is what we intend to do for every day. Ten years down the road, council can go back and say that was then. This is now. We've got a different idea. So I think that's <coughs> it. I say that so we don't misunderstand each other. I understand. I got this about it. Okay. Is it open? You're thinking about it. Uh, if there's anything you can think of after you've done everything that you say we're going to do that could go into the society. Would you think about that? Because if we see everything that he asked us to do in these documents, what would be left in the communication? Well, things in five years, things down the line. But you can't find anybody. We can't find their counsel. We can't find their counsel. Is that right? Yeah, we can't find future ones. I don't mean this, tactic. this might get back to the two points you made. I want one agreement, I want it binding on both parties. But you wanted to contribute something, I think, before your caucus. Oh, I mean, if we were, this is what we want here in the first place. To us, the RGS, when we sign on, we're, we're there for 30 years. And so we're just going sort of around an April here. And uh, I, I don't want to be anywhere for 30 years without an option to get out in order to do. And if we can't change the RGS, which is what we came here, wanting to do, and, and that seems to be something that's sort of a formidable task, and we're going to do it through another document, the vehicle being, I guess, an implementation agreement, which is fine, and if we're going to do that, then we just have to figure out a way to make it work. Just because it's never been done before doesn't mean we can't do it, right? So I, I heard about a 15 or 20 minute caucus. I'll check in on you in about 15 minutes and see how people are doing. We'll be back. Okay, um, I think that uh, hopefully that time was well spent. My understanding of how to, how to move ahead here is uh, Selena's got, I think, some comments and some questions with respect to what's been discussed in their room. Uh, we'll certainly attend to that, and then depending on where that leaves you, then it, it might be time to turn to uh, my suggestion. And I think I could easily be rejected, it's happened before, um, that there needs to be some documentation of that. So everybody leaves this room with the exact same understanding of what has been worked out, and then that gets translated into the, the appropriate mechanisms. And I think there's three things there. What's the substance? And much of it is in Bookland's proposal, can be lifted out with a little words missing. This isn't going to be drafted by committee. The second thing is, how does this get formalized? Is it an implementation agreement, and if so, what does that look like? Third thing is, next steps, dates, who, what, when, where, all that kind of good stuff. And I think that can be, a, you know, it's a page or two. That's my suggestion, and I'll be adamant that I think it's helpful, but if everybody rejects it, then you can do it on the back of napkins and hope you agree. So, Selena, without further ado, it's over to you. Thank you. Um, I just want to make sure that we have understood all the pieces of, of your concerns. So we sort of went away, talked about it, and uh, just, I guess this is just a cross-referencing of making sure that we are on the same page. So on page three, um, you commented only on the bolded parts. And I'm assuming that that's the preference, that, that the direction you'd like to move. I think you don't want to make any assumptions. Um, and, um, and the support, right, one and two, and that support the process of member of municipal initiated RJ. So that's the word smithy piece that we'll leave for later. So just wanted to clarify that. Um, the other one um, on page four, you commented on uh, bullet number one. Did you want uh, that language changed, or is that understood now? 
Well, I think it's understood, <clears throat> and I think the uh, people that are going to be working with this. Uh, they can go away and. They can. Okay. There's that's, not a. That's fine. Right. We just wanted to, to confirm that. Um, on page five, around the third party facilitator, um, we understood that you're looking to uh, have the, the top working group sort of get at it, and, um, and what we're thinking is that if they needed assistance, that with assistance from a qualified planner, of, you know, expert planner, would um, help unstick them. It sounds like there have been attempts that they've gotten sort of bogged down. And so we're just looking to, to we don't want to recreate the same experience. So our suggestion is maybe not to share it, but to be available to help them move forward with this task. Um, so it's not the same people doing the same thing, because that's more like banging your head against the wall. So that's just what we're just looking to free up. Free you see, up. I think that they're free to do that kind of thing no matter what. Okay, so attack. So I, so I think you can just take that chair by qualified third party facilitator. They will be free to design their own procedure, and they would make the problems a modest, uh, modest budget, and they can have to solve this as, as they need. You know, if the situation can be Would it, uh, it meet your intent if we said instead of third, third party facilitator, if we added with any assistance? any outside assistance that TAC deems necessary. And that would work. Sure, that would work. Okay. Yeah. Instead of chair by the qualified It doesn't have to be chair, but just they have access yeah. to so other any, expertise. Any outside assistance that TAC deems necessary. Yeah, that would be fine. And certainly within 12 months, we appreciate the time limit, I think, for over five So those are just the clarification pieces we wanted to make sure that we understood. Okay. 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 That's the content, right? Yeah, there it is. Okay. Now comes the interesting question of, of in what form does this come and what about an implementation agreement, two-way agreement, the non binding That interesting discussion that you broke off after you, you began to scratch those services. Further thinking on that? Uh, Jim, so over to you. Uh, yes, thanks, Jenny. Um, in, uh, in looking at this, uh, and I'll throw it to Dan, just at, uh, Dan Bennett, uh, uh, and giving us some advice around the implementation agreements and is actually uh, drilling into that. Um, th that would still be our preference, and I, I think um, I put all the four sort of uh, twin tracks of activity here. There's uh, a sense of urgency of moving on, uh, including this process of uh, the division of labor um, and um, probably best service and, 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 and this, uh, this uh, going ahead. So, what we would like to do, um, if uh, it's acceptable to, to Metro, is um, take away and maybe Jamie can help in just making sure we have a common understanding record of what we're agreeing to today. We'll take that away and in pretty short order um, put that into a draft implementation agreement and, and get it through to Metro. Um, at the same time, it sounds like uh, Metro is going to uh, proceed with preparing uh, amendments to the procedures by law. So it's, Second trial. Um, so that would be our our our, um, our offer and our, our request on that. Now, Dan had some specific thoughts around the implementation agreement. Uh, um, so if, I, if I could, Dan. Yeah, sure. Um, so Bukalum uh, asked me about the uh, enforceability of the, the three main provisions that are going forward: the the staff and TAC review of future amendments the five-year uh, process around reviews, and then, of course, the metrics. And uh, the problem is if it's just put into procedure bylaws, uh, that can be changed at any time by Metro if they decide to change the bylaw. Uh, Kukulam uh, initially had asked for these to be part of the RGS, so that if they were ever to be changed, it could only be done by the unanimous consent of all the <coughs> participants uh, to the RGS, which would include Kukulam. So uh, they're looking for a stronger mechanism uh, that, that guarantees them uh, the ability to ensure that this happens going forward once they give away their only remaining uh, card, which is, of course, the DOC, the FGS. So we, we've been looking at implementation agreements, and, and uh, they have been used in different contexts. Uh, the Act talks about it, an implementation agreement can be made respecting the coordination of activities related to implementation, and that's what we think these three really are. Uh, these are not binding the board to do anything in 
making sense of any decision. What they're doing is, is organizing the coordination of activities that will happen when there's a amendment. Metro staff will agree to do a review and have to have a look at it. Uh, on the five-year review, it's the series of workshops. And then on the metrics, it's the annual reporting. So, so we think it actually fits quite nicely into an, into an implementation agreement. It's the coordination of those activities. Now, uh, one of the things we've talked about as we caucused, I, I, I took Johnny's point about the concern uh, that, you know, what happens if down the road, uh, Metro decides they don't want to do this anymore, it's, it's, it's no longer of use, it's, uh, it's unnecessary. So what, what we were thinking is, uh, in the agreement, um, recognize it would be binding on both parties, but have a clause that if it becomes you know, obsolete or oppressive or unworkable in some way, uh, then the agreement would come to an end. And, uh, and if the parties can't agree on the fact it's obsolete, if, if Kaputlin still thinks it has value and Metro doesn't, uh, we could include an arbitration clause and have a third party decide. And, and these, I picked the word obsolete because these, this, this is the wording that's used with respect to restrictive covenants in the Property Law Act. They, they stay in place unless it becomes obsolete, and if you don't agree, you go to court, and court says, yeah, it's obsolete, the restrictive covenant comes off. So to be responsive to, uh, to Johnny's concern, uh, we think this, this will allow a way uh, for the parties to move forward. It'll, uh, it'll ensure from Clinton's perspective that there will be a coordination of the activities, and be, these processes will be in place um, on the five-year review and the metrics and, and any amendment. And, uh, and Metro will have the ability, if they think it becomes obsolete, uh, to have a way out once they convince the third-party arbitrator if, if the will doesn't just voluntarily agree to remove it. And so those, those are my comments. Well, if I can reply to that, and I think that we obviously have to have more conversation about it, but I don't think we're, you're asking us about coordination. You're saying what is being suggested here is that this will go to town. The staff will report on these metrics each year, uh, talking about what will happen when amendments come forward, when the workshops are going to be held. It's not important. It's, it's, you shall do this. And if, and if, if you don't, uh, it's the reference has been made to a two way binding agreement. And that's so Coquitlam is in a position to say, you are to do this. And, and in, in terms of obsolete, it could be unworkable, it could be all inappropriate for any number of reasons. Uh, and so I, I'm not sure that the analogy is, is appropriate. Um, what it boils down to, on the, to, to turn it to the positive side, is we have been persuaded, uh, and I include the people behind me in this, uh, though they can have their own say, uh, we have been persuaded that these are positive uh, steps that should be taken to enhance the situation. The other side of that is, if in the wisdom of the board at some point 10 years from now, they decide that something isn't working or should be changed, the board can't be in a position for this board to bind the board 10 years from now and say to Kukulman, you have a veto. No city has a veto over anything, to my knowledge, and I don't think that, that should start now. Just, just so I'm clear, it's the coordination of activities, and, and these would be activities that are part of the implementation of the plan. And, uh, and in terms of the veto, if Coquitlam stuck to its original proposal, which is, was to put it into the RGS, then every municipality would have a veto if somebody tried to change this. So that's just my only comment response. And then I think Jim wanted to respond to May, but I think what, what part of you was saying, coordination might be processed. The board would have to ensure that workshops take place, that this takes place, that that takes place. That's what that's the binding that's going on here, I think. Um, Jim May, I don't know. Uh, Jim May, if I got <coughs> to defer to counsel. One of the things that we had also spoken about is, you know, again, if we wouldn't be here, someone wasn't going to get tied up for a number of years without someone else being able to do something. So if if this process moves along and in five years we do a review, we will do a review of, of the RGS. And at that time, is if there's an opportunity to change, we could probably put some of the concerns that we've agreed to in the implementation agreement, if they're still valid, not obsolete, all those things, right into the actual RGS document. And then we wouldn't have to deal with anything. So I mean, 
there's opportunities. And that would work. Well, but what I'm saying, you know, the board may, in its wisdom, decide that all kinds of provisions are appropriate to be put. I mean, we're talking about looking at the TAC working group is going to talk about regional consistency and clarity and all that stuff. And maybe that will necessitate a, a change to the growth strategy. But the board would have to be persuaded in its wisdom at that point <coughs> that those changes are appropriate. What we're talking about here is um, we, we say uh, 10 years from now, uh, this reporting of, of all these staff things um, isn't appropriate. It's not working. Uh, so we need to change it. Or it wants to change it. Coca-Cola says you can't. I'm sorry. That's not a position that I believe that the board, this board, will now accept. I don't believe the intergovernment committee will accept it either. And in five years from now, if these items, we'll call them items for now, are in the actual RGS, then that will pose a problem. Sure, that, that would be the board as a whole uh, taking a look at it and deciding that that's a good idea. Sorry. I mean, but that's, that's different. That's different to have the whole board deciding on something and going forward as opposed to Kukul them saying you must do this. Right, but so my point is if we're going to come into some kind of agreement now, and then in five years we're going to be re-looking at the document and remove these things that are still pertinent into the document, then we wouldn't have to deal with them. And then Kukul them wouldn't be alone in having a say or anything. It would be everybody else. It would yeah, be like any other class. But there's no guarantee that that's going to be inserted in the growth strategy. Okay. Or at any time. For a year. It could be six months from now, or it could be 16 years from now, or not at all. But we can't be in a position where, where one, any city is dictating to the board what they, they, what they have to do. So what was your idea of an implementation agreement? Well, I, I don't know the appropriate wording of what you call it, probably an MOU or something. To talk about the mutual goodwill, that these are good ideas, that what the parties believe that this will enhance the growth strategy in some fashion. And we want, we mutually want to do this. That way you're you're not binding future boards on your decision making ability and, and you're not going to be one city, any city of the world. I believe that's a totally different document to this is raising a lot of questions that a lot of people want to chime in on this. I know it's silly nice to say Jim has something, I think Johnny does as well. This is a major question that has to be tackled somehow. Because this hopefully won't get in the way of the substantive progress. This is procedural. Uh, Jim, if I could, and uh, I thought we were making some, some traction here. Um, but certainly, uh, Mayor Brody's point, and then we, we face the same dilemma in any municipality. We cannot have a better future council, and obviously at the regional level, we cannot for our future board. Um, we're, we're well aware of that. We've, we've heard the concerns expressed. Um, I think there's ways that we can work in um, terms in, into an uh, implementation agreement. As uh, Dan's mentioned, they have that with respect to the there are uh, drop dead clauses in, in, the, in the agreements too. There's, there's various ways I think I'm quite confident we can come up to address those concerns. And it's simply that we're under the legislation obligated to consider Breaking of the RGS in five years, and was, and this agreement is part and parcel of this RGS. It would then, the, the new RGS, or the amended RGS, it would then presumably uh, make another implementation agreement, or at that time, it, it, one is not unnecessary. So it's, it's not that it's blocking the region in uh, any longer than it's blocking us into um, living by, abiding by the, the RGS for that five year period. So, but we've, we've, we've taken the capability of the concerns. We will apply our best efforts if again, there's consensus at the table to take that tack. <clears throat> we'll apply our best efforts to come back with some wording to address those concerns so we're not covering a future council or, or a future board or us, a future council. And it's certainly not Cumberland's intent to have veto power um, over you know, regional matters or the RGS. Um, that's one of the things we've been kind of, uh, pushing against. So we don't want to be in that role. So. 
Could you have a suggestion as to take where Dan departed from and go a little further with that to see if you can allay some of those concerns? And I don't know if there's an appetite to consider that or not, but that's, that's a proposal as a way around this potential. Um, Selena, more well, than that? Along, along those lines, um, I see the uh, review process as a, as a key uh, departure point. And I'm not quite sure, I don't know enough about the legalities of it, and the lawyers and planners can talk more about it. But this idea that um, that this um, will come forward with the, the next substantive review as part of the review process. So if it's obsolete, it can be changed, or that it gets rolled into the RGS. So that when, and it, I'm not sure how to do that legally, but it's the idea that um, this agreement will be in effect until there's a substantial review, at which time these items will become part of the review process, and then either becomes part of the RGS or it doesn't. But there's a there's a term, and we're looking at five years if that's really where it comes to. It, that's where, that's where it comes to. Okay, yeah. Maybe once it locked in until forever, as long as it's a plan. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm yeah, but there's you're coming at this a bit differently. I, we have to get clarity. I mean, Dan wants to think, chime in on this. Do you want to give, hand it over to Dan for now? Is that okay? I don't know, Ralph, if you want to chime in on this on your end, but at some point. Uh, I'm just going to say, I wouldn't necessarily agree with you. It's a procedural report. I think it's substantive, and, and Mayor Brody's identifying it. There's, there's sort of two different things being discussed here. So I think just we need, I don't know if at some point we may need to caucus to clarify what exactly it is, but I see it more as a substantive point. What are the two differences then? Do you, do you want to do you want to huddle and, and make sure you're clear about what those? Because I think you are saying slightly different things, and I and I don't know if one. <laughs> you might have to decide internally what you're suggesting, because I think Selena, you were. It was a bit different, certainly, than what May was suggesting. Okay. 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 So there may need to be more internal clarity there. Okay. Um, uh, Richard, Johnny, I don't. Johnny, RGS fetters every council and and the board uh, Metro for 30 years. It fetters us. That's what its purpose is. Um, we approach this from the point of view of our objections with the RGS, and uh, Metro approached it from the point of view that they would not entertain, despite the, the legislation requires everyone to entertain uh, uh, amending the RGS at this point, um, that they wouldn't have been able to entertain them in the RGS at this point. So we uh, proposed language that would do it without an amendment to the RGS, but would nonetheless have the same effect as an amendment to the RGS. And that required an implementation agreement that was binding. And um, you can call it fettering uh, or whatever, you can call it a veto, but I'm, you know, it is an intent, intent to have the effect of the RGS amended without amending the RGS, and that was your request, not ours. Our, our request was actually fine with, with amending the RGS. So I'm, I'm having a little bit of difficulty with the, um, uh, I thought everyone was on the same page related to an implementation agreement, but that, that clearly that was the way to achieve it, because otherwise a one party could, uh, Metro could uh, change its mind and, and reverse itself on the concession that it's willing to uh, find to meet us our way along this road. And so, the uh, labor event, that's what the RGS does. It fetters future councils and fetters metro Vancouver. The legislation requires it to. Johnny, I think you're also the suggestion is, maybe I'm getting this wrong, I think I'm getting it right though, that the veto that people are concerned about would potentially be diluted by having provisions of an arbitration or something if there was a disagreement came to the right wording about obsolete, inappropriate, deemed, if, something. Is that, that correct? That's correct? Okay. Johnny? I, I want to start out by saying that, that what we're talking about is, is not actually your proposals at this point in time. I think we're actually saying, you know, we can not only accept your proposals, we think good proposals, and we want to be prepared to move forward with resolutions and bylaws and all the rest to, to, to put them into place. And, uh, and certainly, I'd be prepared to recommend to my board that sort of something that says uh, Metro and Cool is prepared to pass the necessary bylaws and resolutions to give effect to all these proposals. 
and, and uh, well, when they're in place, you know, when the resolutions and bylaws are in place, then, then and only then you could uh, accept the, uh, the uh, original growth strategy. Uh, so I, you know, I, I think it's important to keep reminding ourselves that, that it's, not, it's not the intention here for Metro to kind of go, good, we pass these, now you accept, okay, well, we're sending all these, because we never believe it. I'm sure that's not the intent we're not going to describe it. Okay, uh, but, uh, but obviously the, the concern for a guarantee is that we don't do that. Uh, and so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to empathize with that concern. Uh, at the same time, I mean, just a couple of clarifications. The unanimous consent is only really if we propose to amend the original growth strategy now with these. Then it has to go out as part of this process. If we amended them afterwards, then in fact, uh, other than one, uh, the one that says we'll refer things to staff, that becomes a tag one because it's to do with the amendment process. All the rest are just 50%. I mean, you can amend the regional growth strategy, and as soon as you're done, you get the amendment. 50% plus one. It doesn't take the you know, consent, it doesn't take two thirds, it doesn't take referral, all the others are reversing all the people who are in the regional growth strategy by a single vote. So that kind of shenanigans is open to the board, except if they have to, if it actually went as far as to say it would refer applications to staff, which is kind of needs to be a, a deviation. So I'm trying to think of what what could we do? I mean, it, 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 is, it is this philosophical, it's yeah. a political philosophical thing. It's nothing to do with the actual nature of the policy. It's That's the right. philosophical thing that 21 municipalities around the table said, we went through our process, and we worked hard, and we resolved our problems, and we're signed off. And Coquitlam, however they characterize it, didn't agree, and they get rewarded with an ability to essentially block any further procedural amendments that future boards may consider. And that, I mean, that's going to be very, very hard for anyone to recommend. I'm not sure I'm not sure what I'm not it, but politically it's, it's difficult. So how do, I, how do I find a way to go some measure to recognize your concerns without putting the rest of the board in that, in that situation? And what I was talking to my colleagues about was if we put forward a CD bylaw to accommodate all your proposals. And in that CD bylaw, we stated that these are, uh, that, that we have agreed that these are uh, useful exam proposals to put forward. And it is the intent that these, uh, that these provisions remain in place for five, uh, without review uh, for five years until the first review. Now, uh, again, I want to be absolutely straight. It, by putting that in, it's stating the intent of the board, that we're doing this in good faith, just like the province put its intent to consult in their, in their legislation. It doesn't mean that under, if in four years or whatever, the board says, you know, this referral to staff and TAC on, on everything that comes forward is costing us a fortune, all the delay and the developers complaining because it takes four months and six months to do something that could be done in one. We want to revisit it. It doesn't take away the board's ability to do that. But it does state, it does put language into the bylaw that says if you're going to change this, if you're going to look at it, if you're going to review it, you've got to be doing it for darn good reason because this was stated to be in good faith was intended to remain for five years. And so politically, not necessarily legally, but politically, you'd have to have a damn good reason to reopen this in five years if you if you wanted to amend this bylaw because it's written into the bylaw that the intention that this would not be reviewed until the plan was reviewed in five years time. That's about as much political weight as I can think of at the moment of putting into a bylaw uh, that doesn't actually give a legal veto to the law municipality that hung out uh, for approval and due to so much difficulty say to the other 21. You were, you were good children, you, could, you, you negotiated an agreement. Those bad guys in Coquitlam, they, they hung out and look, we rewarded them with this veto. I mean, that's, 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 the, that's, that's, uh, that's the, that's the part I'm asking you to empathize on our side of the table, how hard that will be to, 
to explain to, to other people about a binding agreement is that Coquitlam had a special sale or something that no other municipality had. So uh, if, if we went that far to put those kind of, <coughs> that kind of political weight into the proceeding by the law that says this was a riot in good faith, the board, the, the board feels this is, these are sound proposals and it is our intent to give them a good ride and they did not be reviewed for five years unless there's some overwhelming circumstances. I think Jim and Bolton may have a, but you're at the crux of the matter here, right? You're, you're right there now. Um, and I I think partly what you're trying to do is, is negotiate a bit of a trust replacer. I'll say it up loud. Um, and I think Johnny said, here's a potential way to do so. Um, and whether you're ready to respond to that or have other ideas that flow from that, I'm not sure. But may, I think you would indicate you had something to say. And, and I want to say something about here, the 24 other communities have said, here you are, and we're all wearing white caps, and here's the foot on the black hat on. We're doing something that we can reach agreement on. Well, you know what? I will tell you, dealing with uh, the items in our regional contract statement, like most of the members of the Intergov Committee that have spoken, we have very good relations. We dealt very well, and that's not the issue. None of those are the issues. Our issue is what I think, and these are my words, so you can only blame me for them, that I think is a fundamental flaw in the basic regional growth strategy document that does not allow, does not commit, does not totally commit that there be a five-year review. That is my biggest issue, and it's a burning issue. I don't have to tell you that, you know. And the fact that we're into it, and Councillor Stevenson himself he even got up and spoke to it at the last meeting. You know, we're signing on to a 30-year agreement, and I want something in it that every one, two, five, seven, whatever years, I want the ability, I think everyone should have the ability. There has to be a term where and I can review. You say it's partly in there, some of it's on trust. We, I get all that. We're talking about a legal document here. I do not know how to do this. I know what I'd like to do, and I understand that you think you're going to have a problem selling this. Coquitlam is not doing this for Coquitlam's sake. This is a flaw that I think is missing from the document. And I know that not a, not a lot of other councils are looking at this, and maybe they don't want to look at it, or for whatever reason they don't think it's necessary to look at it. I think it is a flaw, and I think it needs to be looked at. And I don't know how we get around this. When you said implement, and I got the implementation agreement idea from you, I guess, at our last meeting, and I thought that could work, that could really work. And that's where I have sort of traveled on is along your train of thought. And now it seems that it may not be the right document to use. So I have to refer back to legal counsel to find out what is the right document to, to use. The right way of formalizing it. Um, Jim and Johnny both want to chime in on this. I don't know who makes sense to go first. Or... Can, I, can, I, can I just respond? Because I think it's important for us to understand that the, the binding document was the legislation. Even if you have a review or whatever the review is, you can't opt out of the original growth strategy. There's no, there's no provision in the legislation that says, I don't like it, so I don't want to be part of it anymore. You're in. Uh, we're all in. Whether we have a review or we don't have a review, and whether that review leads to any amendments or not, we could have a review in five years' time, and the, and the 21, 21 members of the board might say, I don't agree if we don't have any amendments to this as a result of a review. And there isn't even anything to appeal. There's no arbitration for that at all. So this, the, 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 the having a review yes. or not doesn't give you the ability, if you like, to opt out of this 30 year or 20 year or 50 as long as the legislation is in place, we're all, we're all in the regional growth strategy business. And the only difference between a commitment to the, to the five-year review or a commitment to decide whether you're going to have a five-year review is really whether the board on balance thinks that there's enough wrong with with a, with a regional growth strategy to spend uh, several million dollars it takes to review every clause, or whether you think, well, there's just one piece of it that these uh, tweaking. So that's just an amendment. And the amendment's open for that for five years, as we said before. 
subtle one. And I'm trying to sort of you know, understand your concerns. There's a concern out there that you've got. You're stuck with it. That's in the legislation. You have the ability to come under it. And the controls are on you for five years. What we're talking about here is we, we substantially agree with all your proposals. Um, we're, we're now in agreement where we're actually this close to so this non-binding process of actually coming to a successful conclusion, which is, as you know, I think we could, uh, but we're that close to doing it. And I'm just saying, if, if there's some way of finding a, a wording commitment by the board that says, look, what we've agreed to, we've agreed to a good faith, it's not our intention to go back and revisit that in the next five years, without actually saying to, it's not just this board and the next board, it's actually the board after the next board. Uh, look, if you have a different way, if you actually think there's a different way of doing it, instead of having a council council, you want to workshop or instead of having a workshop, you want to have two or whatever, you're not allowed to go for it without the board's consent. That's the, that's the one sticking point. If we can find a way around that by this kind of wording in, in that procedure by law, any other document that says, there's a lot of good faith in here and heavy people commit. But it isn't a, a forever and a day binding uh, in a legal sense. Then we're all, we've all got this done. You might, you might also want to spend a little time, and I know time is of the essence here, we've got a couple more hours left today, to think about this carefully, because this, you are this close, but this is a big piece. Uh, whether the protections are there with what Johnny's suggesting, whether that good faith and intent and trusting this can be built through this, is something you're going to have to consider, or there might be another way around it, don't know. But Jim, maybe you're going to shed some light on this. Um, thanks, Jim. Um, yeah, I, I don't know, we're simply slipping back down the hill again here, and that's, that's, that's very unfortunate. Um, a couple of things, uh, just listening to the, the back and forth of the conversation. Certainly, Coquitlam does not want to be regarded as the outcast or the, uh, the petulant child that's being reborn. No, we, we, we're, a, we're a, uh, an important contributing member of, of the metropolitan region, and we want to uh, hold our heads high, have credibility, and, and be a, a properly functioning member of, uh, of, the, of the region. So, um, in, in fact, as, as Councillor Reed pointed out, the issues we were raising aren't just specific to what we're trying to make it a better plan for all. Maybe a little altruistic, but that, really that's, that's where we're coming from on this. Um, the good faith piece, um, I think the path I see going forward is going to place a lot of um, reliance on good faith on the limit. If we can agree to the vehicle and push hard on the implementation agreement, I think we're almost there. Um, I will need to work with our solicitors and we'll bring it to our panel, our council, and, and we get them to uh, buy in and endorse that. And, and equally so for, for Metro or the Interdub Committee. Um, and then once that's passed, um, the City of Clip on the council, I'll bring in four recommendations. Now it's time to consider acceptance of the RGS. And once you've made that acceptance, that's a one way gate, you're in. <laughs> and so we're, we're doing that on good faith that it seems we're sort of committing to and agreeing to, to the implementation agreement will in fact happen. So we're, we're, we're taking the lead, we would think, based on trust. Um, again, Johnny, I, I, uh, I'm not familiar with the Metro's procedures by law, but in the rare instance of I've dealt with municipal procedures by law, you don't want to look up with this sort of, I mean, sure this is a lot of details specific to one process and one plan. Um, so, Again, I would caution on that point. Um, but also, you can do it in a five year commitment. You will not amend that by law for that period of time. I think that's probably more draconian than what we even think about with implementation. So, let us, um, I'm just making an appeal here. We've heard the concerns, we know the, uh, the issues. And I think there's ways to deal with those, to address those. Um, the implementation agreement, I think, again, the, in my mind, would, would, would uh, be in effect until the, the review of the RGS is done. It's uh, always way to go away at that time where we revisit it. We cannot commit a future board nor a future council to what will happen at that point in time. So um, I, I think we are, the appropriate mechanism is implementation of so We do need an outcome. We do need a product for this process. We need a record of what we've agreed to. And I think if, if, if we move on to this, um, to get our 
actual proposals here. We're going to go your system. Bruce is actually uh, taking like a step to put some of the additional reading we could read through earlier in our discussion. And if we can let's get over this point, uh, and trust it with us, and then we'll bring something back. Maybe we can go into the substance of the actual wording, so that we can the record of the proceedings, and we can move forward from here. So I may have pushed a little hard, but I think we're very close, and uh, please. There's a fundamental disagreement, yes. Uh, and to use the wording, just to characterize it, the request was for a two-way binding agreement, and that is a major point of difference. <clears throat> because we believe, uh, Metro Vancouver believes, that it's doing this in good faith, uh, that uh, there is no intention to uh, deviate from this, but there is, as, as, as time goes on, and things change, uh, you have to have flexibility. And Metro Vancouver cannot be in a position, because of that agreement, that it has to come to Coquitlam and say, is this okay? Can't do that. The board won't accept it. The Intergovernmental Committee, I don't believe, will accept it either. So, um, it, to, me, we can, to me, we need to address the point, number one. Secondly, we do it in the, in the sense of uh, talking about intentions, talking about good faith, talking about uh, mutual uh, visions, as it were. But we cannot have a two-way plan agreement. And I'll translate some of that saying, I think, Jim, I appreciate you're saying best efforts, let us take, let us think about this, we'll create some language, we'll, uh, you know, we'll dilute the fear of vetoing, we'll, we'll be creative, we'll work with our lawyers, and I, I, I think I'm hearing you, Malcolm, see, even with that, it's, that veto is just a, probably a non-starter, and I think, John, you're saying, I could never sell that. If that's accurate, and I'm not suggesting it, maybe, maybe, maybe that is accurate, maybe there, there's some error to create here, what do you do <laughs> if that doesn't succeed? And I'm not going to start warning everybody with negotiation alternatives, um, but you do have alternatives. There's a settlement value to doing this. There's a trust question here. There's protections that parties need. <coughs> one vehicle that one is suggesting for those protections is an implementation agreement. Another is suggested an intent embedded in with maybe some time frame to it. Those are two possibilities. I don't know what other ones exist, but I think not to lose sight of the fact that you've agreed in substance. It's a matter of how does that substance get formalized in a way that's creating adequate protections and trust. That's your challenge. If I, if I, if I, if I could, I think it's reasonably accurate. Um, when we talked about implementation agreements or some other thing at the last meeting, it was my uh, impression that basically we just wanted assurances that we were going to do what we said we were going to do. Uh, and if you if you were going to uh, uh, approve the accept the regional growth strategy, you wanted some assurances that we would do this. And so and I'm, I'm still prepared to say uh, that I would recommend to the board an implementation agreement that says we are prepared to put in place through bylaws and resolutions the intent of, of, of all of these uh, and, uh, and, and equipment as part of that implementation agreement is to to accept the original growth strategy. All I'm saying is that by the 15th, okay, by you know, trying to try give you greater assurance, I was going to have like, the staff and myself and my work on actually doing it by the 15th. What's come out now is what, what seems to be a, a, a concern is what happens after the resolutions and bylaws and implementation agreements are in place. The notion <coughs> that a two way binding agreement would in fact prevent the ability of the future board to amend or do anything with those with those violence. And that's what we're saying is well that's, that's, that is that that becomes a bridge too far. Uh, you've got to we have all got to accept and once those bylaws and implement uh, bylaws and resolutions and things are in place and put in with every intention of implementing them, uh, that we can't then building something that for the next five years, the Portland has a special uh, provider on the board's ability to revisit it if it wants. And if we can get past that, you know, and, and I've heard several times people say that wasn't the intent, uh, then, then why, I 
just ask you, if we could manage to put all these in place with bylaws with the right language by the 15th and put out a document because I can see my document to say, you've done this, put out a document to say, this is our agreement and Metro, by, uh, Metro agrees to do it to Metro Lab and Equipment agrees to accept the result of uh, the growth study that the program has and that's, that's a success. That's, that's a, a victory. My, my concern is if we if we then try to wordsmith this in terms of what happens after we do all this, we'll never get to accepting the usual growth strategy. Uh, uh, and when we stop in going to binding arbitration, then all the mice are back on the table. Sonia? Thank you. Uh, well, you certainly presented some perspectives that uh, I certainly haven't really thought about. And, uh, and I think it would be helpful for us, I think, to caucus, take that uh, away see what else, I mean, I think we have some resources at the table that I have some questions for, and I think that will be helpful right now in this moment to, uh, is it 15 to My apologies, I've been up for three, four hours, and I might not come back. Um, I count on my colleagues who are presenting um, as well. I'm not going to well, but I'm not going to wish you well, um, I want to uh, away home. Yes, please don't. Now, permission, I just want to make sure, because I have the document that was this document in, a, in an electronic form on my BlackBerry. Permission to send it on to the person who might end up putting this up there? So I still think that you're going to get there. I do believe that, and I think that's substantive stuff, and it's not worth smithing. You've done it live together already. If we could get that going, just those paragraphs lifted with a bit of changes. That I can you say the work had already I'll done check that, Jimmy, and yeah. I've typed it up for you, so I'll just send it to you as edited with my best efforts to capture what I heard here. Thank and you. That to be reviewed by all parties. Great, thanks. I'll check in with your caucus in 15 minutes and see how you're doing and uh, see where it takes you. You're going to get there. Don't give up. And I think I just checked in with, with John and he suggested maybe Jim, it's yourself and Dan that might comment on this, but I'm not sure if, if Selena, you or me, and uh, Bruce have something to add. I don't know how you want to do this. Please. Is that right, Jim? You're the other guy at this point. Um, I, I've been uh, nominated to be the spokesperson. Um, uh, a couple of things. Um, again, it's uh, regrettable we see the. Um, and backwards, but uh, nonetheless, um, in, in taking away um, things about what we heard around some of the uh, ideas of uh, um, amending your procedures bylaw and sending some five year uh, timeline commitments to that, um, I guess that coupled with a, a memorandum of understanding, which is another possible vehicle, um, that's an option. Um, it's not our preferred option, and uh, in fact, I think that could be problematic. Um, that would be a new piece that we need to take back to our council, because at this point, we've been talking about implementation agreement as a vehicle. And, uh, um, so we, we, the panel didn't feel we had sufficient um, authority to be, as a mayor, I believe, to, to do the business, um, that we could sort of make that concession at this point. So that, that would be a um, bit of a sell. Uh, job for their council, and I'm not sure how they would respond. Um, that said, um, we still think there is um, opportunity and potential uh, to take material we put on the table, and it's, we don't seem to be disagreeing around with the, you know, the, uh, uh, the proposals and what they really amount to and what they commit to, um, which is a good thing. It's just how that would be, be brought about. So, um, and Again, recognizing you know, the concern and fear of finding a future board and locking them in somehow to a process for now and forever, and that's, that's, that's not the intention. Because um, at the end of the day, if, if these things aren't workable, if they aren't beneficial, if they aren't helpful, why? And uh, so what we would suggest is, um, in, so it's a timeline concern. And maybe if we can just, so basically what we're talking about is uh, print on page three, points one and two, 
pursue this item, we would press it through an implementation agreement and one. And the bottom of that paragraph, in five years' time, this could be even considered. He's saying something different than you. He's my boss. Go ahead and listen in. Okay. <laughs> what are you saying? Okay. I put it at the very bottom. I'm waiting to hear where exactly the phrase should go. Let's not worry about where it should go. Let's worry about what it means. And I think Johnny wants to say something. Oh, can I yeah. just ask one more thing before Johnny goes in? I'm sorry, Johnny. Okay. Uh, is this like a sunset clause? So sounding like it. Yes. It is. No, so. No, we say that? Well. That's not No. But I. That's when, Dan, do you want to speak up on it? Yeah, I, I think what Jim was trying to say is that uh, the concern earlier was that if it's a, a straight two-way agreement forever, Coquitlam had a veto. Uh, all Coquitlam would like to have is a commitment that, that these things will happen for five years, so it'll cover one review period. And at that point, if the board doesn't like it, they can pass a resolution to stop doing it. Uh, if they still if they still like it, it'll just carry on. So. It's not, a, it's not a true sunset clause in the sense it ends, but what it is is any control um, or any um, requirement to talk with the bill of ends after five years, and then after that it's purely a board matter. So is it's, that generally or for just those two? No, the intent was for the, uh, all, from the discussion we had, was for all, all three things, the, the, the uh, staff attack review of any amendments that would happen for five years, and then if the board doesn't like it anymore, they'd pass a resolution to get rid of it. Uh, the five-year review would happen, the, the workshops of the five-year review would also only happen once, because it's going to be limited to five years. And then the last one, the annual reporting would happen for five years. And then and at that point, if the board didn't like it, it would, it would change its procedure by law to get rid of it. So what you're, aren't you making a general point in, in which we should just address in this letter where it says implementation agreement? to insert a clause that says that the terms of the implementation agreement uh, can be reviewed by the board uh, after five years. Yeah, that's, yeah, and that's, yeah, that's kind of what they're trying to say, but, but you put it wherever you like. That is the idea. Oh, well, it's a general point. Yeah. It, it talks about the whole thing, so don't exactly. put it on a specific Don't worry about where it's going to be put. You'll put it in the right place, but no, that's, yeah, that's right. the right point. No, no. That is the central point. You've got, this is a general point that okay. affects the whole thing, yeah. not just that paragraph. But I wanted the meaning to be clear. I think you can agree on where to locate that meaning easily. That's not going to keep you up at night. Johnny? He's conferring with, with Ralph, but... And, and also, you know, I obviously have to speak to my group. Yeah, you're going to have to consider this, where's the relocation of it, but I just wanted to make sure everybody understood what it now means, and that was helpful. Dan, Johnny, uh, Selena, jo Johnny. Just a clarification. Okay. The reason why we broke it out was because for this last items four and five, it's within one year of commencing the analysis, and so... There's the, you don't need a five year. Right. So that's why we, that's, that is why we sort of broke it out a, a little bit. That's true. But to put it in on page three at the end of paragraph number two is making it unduly limited. It is a general point you're making. But it didn't apply to this first item. Exactly. So that's why we sort of broke it out a little bit. Just so I'm trying to explain why. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, John. What I understand Coquitlam is proposing <coughs> is that Metro agree with uh, these proposals to be in place in five years. To commit ourselves to these being in place in five years and, and before <coughs> they are going to be reviewed. And my question is, in four years' time, two boards hence, if the board says, we want to review it now, we want to change that now, what is to stop them doing it? And what I hear is, what is to stop them doing it, is there is an agreement in place with the equipment that the equipment would have to consent. Um, we, we can work with that, but I'm not sure if that's much different from what you said earlier, Johnny, around having a, uh, a built-in commitment in your procedures by lot to abide by those, those uh, added procedures for a five-year period. So um, I think there can be other clauses included in the agreement where mutual consent um, where uh, the party is acting reasonably if there is proven difficulties. It's, it's not the wording here. 
what I what I said before was I was willing to recommend we put this uh, intention in the procedure bylaw, but that intention would not give any municipality the right to veto a decision by the board to revisit those. And what I'm hearing you say is, yeah, uh, instead of putting it in a procedure bylaw, let's have a uh, an implementation agreement that says we think these are great and we want to try these in five years. But by the way, if a board in year four wants to revisit it, you can only do it with Kokoro's consent. That's what I'm hearing you still say. That's so the it's, a statement, it's a statement of intention versus an agreement not to review or change. Dan yeah, would like to speak to this, I think. Is that right? Yeah. 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 The answer is yes. You, you have it right, John. That's the intent of this proposal. Rather than uh, having it in an implementation agreement that binds Metro for the life of the RGS to limit that binding part to five years, the the other aspect you're talking about, and which was sort of an intent document, if we want to call it that, as opposed to a binding document. And we talked about you know perhaps doing an intent document as part of an MOU, recognizing that it's not binding for any period. Um, that's what Jim was saying earlier. If, if, if that's what Metro is going to insist on, that they're not prepared to bind themselves for five years with an agreement with Quillum, then they're going to have to get check their mandate with their counselors because they, that's not something that they have so many real mandate on. So, but to answer your question, you're right. That's what the intent of what they are. Yeah. So you're saying you want Coquitlam to have a veto over the entire regional district? Only well, no, with respect to the, for these three proposals only. Three proposals. That there will be these three workshops for the first review or consideration of review. What, 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 what if May wants to have what next year? Have what? A review. Of these. I don't like about these. I know. Yeah. What if Coquitlam wants to have a review? Right. Well, they, but what if Surrey wants to have a review? We can't have a review. No, 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 sorry, Jamie, I think the review that the, the council time was a review of the RGS, you mean, right? Well, you're talking about a veto. I asked you. They want a veto. And I said, what if someone else wants something in that period of time? This, this wouldn't preclude you from doing other things. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm hearing is, to, from what the chair is saying, is, is if in year two or three, Surrey, let's say, says, I don't think this is working. I don't think this, pick anyone you want, this referral to tax process is working. I want the board to review it. Surrey could not, the board could not entertain Surrey's suggestion without Kokobo's consent. If Kokobo suggested it, then the board could entertain it because Kokobo was a party to the binary agreement. But if Surrey suggested it, the board could not consider it without Kokobo's consent. And I, okay. That's, 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 that's what they're asking, yes. That's, that's essentially it. And, and, and I understand the point that if you if that's your mandate from Kukutlam, then that's your mandate you may have to go back and, and check on it. But I, I, I'm, I'm saying we are very, very close in agreement. And the difference between us is a, uh, a like a good intention statement in, the, in, the, in the whatever the document it is, and I don't care what document it is, but a good intention statement by Metro that says we want to try this and we want to try it for five years, versus a statement that says we think it's a good idea, we want to try it for five years, and we commit that we won't revisit it for five years without the quotas consent. That's, that's the add-on at the end. That's the only difference between us, and for that we would risk going to a binding arbitration where everything's on the table. Absolutely everything. Every designation in Kokomo goes back on the table. And I, I, I just think that the difference between us, between, I mean, we think these are, you know, quite honestly, we think these are good suggestions. We can live with these suggestions, better than live with these suggestions. We don't think these hurt. Uh, we think they could add. We don't see a circumstance where the board would actually go back in the next five years and say it isn't working. Uh, we want to we want to change it. We don't foresee that at all. But what I can't foresee is any. And I can 
consulted with the whole around this room, I can't see any member of the municipality saying, if I want to revisit it, the board can't consider it without Kokono's consent. I can't agree to that. They're all told that. So, you know, this, 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 uh, this agreement would, would not fly if, if, we, if we did that. Whereas you're very close to getting, I mean, we are very close to getting an agreement that every proposal you've got on the table here is going to be accepted. The word smithing is, is just a clarification. And then we'll put it in and we'll put whatever language is necessary in to show that we want to try this in five years. And the first intended review of these is for five years from now. But to say if the board wanted, in its wisdom, to go back and you know do what it could in the, in the regional growth strategy, there would mean, there, be no ability. If we'd have done what you'd have asked us to do and amended the regional growth strategy, Instead, there'd be no way you could put in an agreement that would prevent the board from considering reversing that in the regional growth strategy. They could do it next month if they wanted to. So, you know, kind of, we've got a, we've got a, a lead in the political process around here that, that the board would not agree to this in, in good faith and then do something to screw the just out uh, of miserableness. Uh, you know, kind of, it's not the way this, this it's not the way the world works. I mean, Apart from the fact that I don't think ethically they don't want to do it politically, they still would want to do it. You kill them. So, you know, kind of what we've got in terms of a good faith proposal on the table is whether it's an MOU or whatever it is, uh, I don't care what they call it, an implementation agreement. It's, it's, a, it's the fact that it, it, the way we word whatever that document is, and I don't mind having a, an agreement with, with, with ourselves, I think you probably want to show that got something out of this process and it's documented, I can understand that. But that document can't say to the board, you know, how we phrase it, how we phrase the goodwill commitment to five years, it can't say to the board, uh, as, as Dan said, you can't revisit it with, without Kukulong's consent. I think that's what, what we're saying, that that would be just a sticking point for every municipality that I've talked to. Jim and May. <clears throat> You're still going to get there. I'm predicting this. Okay. okay. Just, just to be very clear, then. So, if there was wording in the um, implementation agreement that um, Metro Vancouver would commit to um, implementing and pursuing these <coughs> measures for a five-year period, that reserves the right um, to uh, revisit and review uh, at, at any time or within that period of time. So then it becomes <coughs> sort of a test of the commitment of, of, of Metro. And you're right, John, then it becomes very political. If there's a position that's being taken, if you're going to back away from that, then it's a political move. OK, so just on that, I think it comes pretty good. Yeah, and Selena also had something. Yeah, I'll let So um, just uh, piggybacking on what Jim said, and so if that were the case, it would be a 50% plus one vote of board to change and make whatever. Just want to OK. Okay. So if we're going on a change like Put your mic over, please. Do you want to be heard? People want to hear you. Are you sure you want to speak? Are they sure it is? This is the exciting part. This is really exciting. Well, um, if this is where we're going, then we need to go back to our council. And we don't have a an official council meeting, but we do have official committee meetings, so we can make provision on Monday to speak to them. And that, I mean, we can, that, and we also have provision, well, I guess that's the purpose one, so let's leave it. Yeah. And my suggestion is that we just caucus for just a minute. Yeah, I, we're, yeah I think both this and, and... We just need to double check that we're all the same. Yeah, and if you do have to report, I think we we'll want to have a document from today in advance of Monday. Okay. Uh, how long? 15? To check on you? It's not even? Okay, I'll check on you in 10. Just use that little room up there instead of Is that open?
respect this, but I think whatever, I mean, I think you've got an agreement, a notional agreement subject to agreements by people who aren't in the room. My suggestion will be you, you would draft a draft agreement in principle without prejudice subject to approval and endorsement. The, the reason I raise that is if people go and there's not a good recollection of what's being endorsed and who said what and what happened, I think that, that could set you back. That's my advice. You're welcome to reject it, of course, but I think you should walk away with something that you can say here is what we want you to consider. Is there a deal? Not said by me. Uh, and, uh, thank you, uh, Jimmy. And actually, that's, uh, that's uh, invaluable advice. Um, I think that's kind of where we wanted to go and what we wanted to put on the table. So um, maybe once we've had that opportunity, there's been some back and forth. If you can bring us back to that, and if we can, you know, capture what we agreed to now and we go off on our, our separate tracks. Um, we, we do understand um, you know, the dilemma you face and, and seemingly that one member of the, the regional district seems to have veto power over the rest. That's, that's, uh, that's um, an untenable position. Um, that said though, we also are looking for some way to ensure that these things are followed up on. We haven't gone through this process in, in vain. And um, so what we, we would like to um, put on the table is, um, and also I think a, a good indication of equipment's willingness to move on and, 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 and conclude this process and, and uh, um, you know, reach, uh, reach agreement. What we would propose to do is <clears throat> we'll start working on um, a draft implementation agreement. Uh, Incorporating those sections in our proposal that we seem to agree on, that would be uh, the items on page four and page five, with the wording changes that we've talked about across the table. And we can come back and just confirm and clarify that in just a few minutes. Um, but specifically around page four, we have that ability for the board review at, at any point in time. So it's, it's not locking in for now and forever. Regarding um, points one and two on page three, um, this, this is really fundamental to uh, Coquitlam's uh, uh, concerns and, and, and uh, um, objectives. And um, so on this, what we would suggest is let's start with this wording. And, um, and if I could ask Johnny, he would sort of pass that piece back over to you. And if, if there's some way of, of, of wording a commitment from Metro on these parts that, that you feel comfortable with, it's not locking you in for now or forever. Um, please take a, take a shot at that. And if uh, uh, you want to come back with some wording to us by the end of the week, we would then review that with our, our council next Monday. And uh, who knows, we might be able to close the gap and, and, and be done with that. So um, if we could ask for you to turn your attention to what you feel would be wording that would commit natural but not lock you in, bind you in, um, we would be open to, to consider that. So um, that's that's our our presentation, our, our proposal this time. May you want to? Yeah, I do. We try to take into consideration, we're so close to getting something done here. We're trying to take into consideration what is untenable, which is co put on having video power over it. That doesn't make sense, and, and we agree with that. But we need something. Um, the rest of it, other than these two, I think we have seen us up. Is there any way, and I mean, I'm going to leave it up to the brains that, that do this kind of work. I gave it up 20 years ago, so there's going to be some legalese and planneries and all that, that we can all sit down together and come up with some kind of an agreement that would give us the assurance that you will have a review in five years or whenever it comes up and go through at least one cycle. And how it's done, I don't know. I don't know if it's by postcard, by birthday card, by a 20-page agreement, or how. But there has to be a way that we can accomplish this. And what we will do today, we will go home, talk about our stuff. We will call a meeting of all our council members on next Monday. We'll get an extra meeting going. We have to do it at land use. We can do it through land use, which is an easy thing for me to chair. And we can get going and advise our council where we are, how far we come, what we're doing. And uh, in that time, by Friday or Monday, maybe the powers that be, our lawyers, your lawyers, or politicians, or planners, or whoever, can come up with some kind of wording that will allow us to accomplish this. And I think that's about how we need to end it. I think we all know what the intent is and how we can wrap ourselves.
The idea is that <coughs> they deal with the statements of intention or even mutual intention as opposed to being a two way agreement. Probably could be. Don't know. Don't know how to word it. Don't know where I mean, without getting into specific, yes. I, I that's the idea. The idea is finding, you know, a memorandum of understanding, my God, that, you know, they really don't mean I have to go out. You know, for someone reading them, they go, oh, wow, look at this, but technically they don't, they don't really hold a lot of water to you. I don't know that our council is even going to be interested in accepting something like that because they have, it hasn't been brought up to them. So I think we'll go back and we'll take care of dealing with that because there's I have other items other than one and two. One and two are really important. Can we address in your suggestion mm -hmm. that what we've got is an agreement in principle? What I, what I hear, and maybe the wording isn't going to be precisely right, but the <coughs> Metro Vancouver and Coquitlam have agreed in principle to the five um, poor proposals. Submitted by Kukula. Metro Vancouver will uh, proceed to draft the appropriate bylaws and resolutions to give effect to those proposals uh, with the intention that these be given a five year trial, but reserving the right of the board to revisit if it feels the circumstances warrant. And Coquitlam will uh, draft uh, an agreement reflecting what we have done um, uh, for our consideration and take it to their council for approval of principle. Uh, uh, kind of on the, on the 11th, I think, uh, the notion or the approach will be taken to Coquitlam on the 11th with the intention that the final documents would be the Metro Vancouver documents will be passed by Metro Vancouver on the 15th, and the, and the agreements and the acceptance will be passed by Coquitlam on the 18th, and then the final uh, uh, readings to the uh, regional growth strategy can be accomplished on the 29th. That's, that's I, I, I can't get to dates, I have no idea. Can you put your mic again? So, what, what I'm trying to do is on every if we hustle our bonds here and keep it, keep it, keep it simple, and keep it straightforward, we can achieve this without going into a hard walk or hiatus where all the wheels can fall off all over again. Uh, so it's like the thing in that relation. So we get close to a deal, you just know you're close to a deal, and you don't let it go because it can rot on you. And so I'm, I'm seeing we've agreed in principle to the essence of your proposals, all parties. We've agreed in principle that Metro Vancouver will implement it through procedure bylaws, resolutions, whatever it is. And the notes will contain a, a commitment in principle to try this in five years, but subject to the right of future boards to begin. And Coquitlam, well, again, subject to your council's approval, will take this back, we'll, we'll produce a document, an, an agreement that we can say, this is what we did, this is what we agreed. This is what we're going to try and do, and Coquitlam uh, and, and will uh, um, consider that uh, uh, along with the acceptance on the 18th. And with those in hand, then the board can go and deal with their growth strategy on the 29th. I, I, I'm, I'm uncomfortable saying I agree in principle because I can't tie my council to my speech. So no, we can't tie our board. It's just us, us, us at the table. Yeah, but can I ask whether I mean we we can't agree on anything either, uh, not in not in this form. But the committee can do various things, um, but can we ask whether this is that what Johnny just outlined and on the substance of what we have got here, um, is it something that you can recommend to your council? What I will be speaking to council about is everything we've spoken about here today, and I will tell them the foibles of what you said about us being able to veto everyone else, and that's obviously unacceptable. And we will be having that conversation with them and explaining all of these. I don't believe all councils even seen this letter. Um, so we'll be 
bringing that up to them. And, um, but other than that, there's nothing I can agree to until, I mean, we know what we're talking about here. And I think staff will have time to work on the document before Monday. So we'll be in a much better position by Monday. It also depends on, who, on what John is able to give back to us in terms of, so how can we formalize what, what does that agreement sort of look like in what context? Yeah. So wasn't included in that agreement? I thought perhaps Jamie, if, <coughs> if, if I can just clarify, because I think we're both like that close, uh, but just to be very, very clear, um, Coquitlam will begin preparing a draft implementation agreement. In that agreement, what we will focus on is on the, the proposal on little page four with the add on that, that, that can be subject to board review at any time. Uh, and the point on little page five. What we're asking for Metro to do is take the proposals one and two on page three, with are there, and what we're asking for is um, come up with some additional wording short of what we talked about before that, that shows commitment on Metro's part to at least try this process one time without binding the board forever. So rather than us presume how we would write that up for you, we're asking you to, um, to, to do that. And if you can get that wording back to us by the end of the week, what we would do is uh, try to have a draft that we can uh, review with our council next Monday. This council research you could lead that discussion. And um, we will have that check in. And hopefully, at that point, we would have that uh, uh, endorsement from, from council. We can't commit to specific dates right now. Um, uh, no more than you do can. You can you know, look at a calendar and sort of target dates. But um, we do have council meetings on the 18th and the 25th. So, um, so there is that opportunity to hit those dates. Um, but we can't absolutely commit to that right now, honestly. John DeJanikos. Exactly. <coughs> um, I just looked at in terms of dates uh, for Metro. Our last meeting in the summer is the 29th of July, and then we don't meet until the end of September. Trust me, if we have to agree, I'll never change my mind on this. If you agree, it it's December, you still have the same answer. Yes, but the last meeting of the summer is the 29th. Okay. Yeah. And then you don't have one in the beginning of September? Here what? <laughs> now, more? No, I'll just say there's, there's nothing to report because we don't have any committee meetings all of right. August, so there's nothing to put onto the agenda. <coughs> Okay, I think Jim's got more, but I want to make sure that that, was, that interaction was clear, what's expected of each side in advance of, of next Monday. I think John's got that message pretty clear. John? Oh, sorry, Jim? Yeah, I was just going to ask for that, that confirmation, because if, if, if we use that, so we'll end this on the other side of the table, and we can minimize this, and we'll take that away and, uh, and uh, make some progress. And, and in, that, in that process, I think, once we get to that stage, we can start up. Get both things done together. Okay. Watch see it again. I was going to say that. You know, you're correct. So. Thank you for lunch. Yeah, do you want to, what, because what you've got up there is the word, is the wordsmithing and the sort of proposals culled out of the original document. And the changes that were notionally agreed to around this table are there in bold. That's with respect to those particular proposals. Um, so I, I don't know if you want to spend two minutes just saying, okay, yeah, that's what we that, that, that's the right wording. Then if you want to just put in a couple of bullets saying, okay, Johnny's gonna Metro's gonna go off and do this, Wilson's gonna go off and do that, we'll connect with such and such a date with, with the product of that work, and um, then you'll know where you're at. I mean that's very vague, but <laughs> Who wants to dictate? We, we should probably confirm um, at least the highlighted elements of that, that document. It's, it's worth five minutes since we're all here. Um, just to make sure that as Johnny described agreement in principle, we all know what that agreement in principle is about. So 
So go, going at the start, if permission I may, what I did is I took the original wording of the proposal that we submitted today. The highlighted pieces with your staff's help, Johnny, are the items that were suggested to the best my ears could carry of what I've heard. If I have captured it wrong, it should be corrected. The key here was that the word support was confusing around support the actual change idea or support the process involved in the Midbury Initiative request. The next item would be, um, I, I should also comment, more of an omnibus comment here is throughout uh, the original document we did write the phrase implementation agreement through here. So you, we may want to make note uh, that anywhere where it says the words implementation agreement may be subject to the, the work that we're discussing today. The other items that we agreed to change today were on the next item, item the two, thanks for getting that. In number one, um, although you didn't specify the change, I added just the term FTEs, does that seem to be the in indication of what you were requesting? If that's satisfactory? Say yes. Moving three to item three, this is the, uh, sorry, objection three related to proposal four, scrolling down, there it is was um, just under item three related to proposal four. This is just the informal guidelines related to the future dispute process. There was no uh, change to that, but I, but I threw it in there for the record so we're complete, which is just uh, suggested that the dispute message be recorded as one potential avenue for pre-arbitration discussions, the informal guidelines for the future. And the change that you requested for items four and five, there were two of them, um, where it formerly had said chaired by a qualified third party facilitator, it now says with any third party assistance they deem necessary. I think I got that right, John. Um, and finally, um, Mayor Brody's session within one year of commencing the analysis. Um, after that point, I think this is, this is your staff kind of working on items today. I don't know what should happen after the term implementation agreement, if anything. So I defer to the agreement. Um, we, yeah, this is, I'm not going to quibble all the specific words. You've got the, the things in bold, and, and uh, the implementation agreement is something we have a problem with. We've, we've agreed in principle to the items in bold, and I am to work out Metro to prepare the necessary implementation documents for Metro to give a of that, and you are to prepare a draft uh, agreement. Is the documents what we agreed to. So, so could we add to the three step an agreement in principle to the above, uh, but then subject to and everything you just said. And I, I, I comment on that again just to, to caution that I did use the term implementation agreement a few times to the document, so I know you'll want more changes. And again, Jimmy, if I can just <clears throat> be absolutely clear. Uh, Johnny, you know, on page three, the uh, proposals. Uh, one and two. Um, what I'm saying is that Metro will take that away and, and add some wording uh, again that will um, provide that commitment to skip the five without walking out. So, um, okay. yeah, so then, are you meeting again? How do you communicate? Am I done? Do I report out to wait for your results of all this good work? Probably best for using it as a court to, to make sure we're subject to I mean, both the reference that I think Councilor Reed was referring to for our council, um, and again, working out the details of the something to that effect. And my business subject to means a lot. Yeah, yeah. And I don't see that yet. Yeah. Okay. 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 Y
Do you, do you want to document the, those steps? I know you've all agreed on them. Do you, do you want those documented? I think Celine's saying yes, yes, yes. And there's somebody there just saying, okay, so that's the content of the agreement in principle. But the, the, the steps that will be taken subsequent to this meeting, I think people want to see it up there so everybody comes with a, with a common record. So somebody needs to dictate, you know, Metro will, da, 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 propose wording that addresses the commitments, that, something to that. I'm not going to draft this in my business. Um, and I think that um, then the, the commitment commit, Coquitlam's making with respect to the draft implementation agreement, as you spoke to, needs to be uh, dictated to somebody if you want next steps in your hands when you leave. Somebody who's graciously taken on the drafting, um, and it's hard to listen to a bunch of different people. There's going to be a few little changes to be made, and I, I'm going to reiterate it's worth spending the next 15 or 20 minutes doing that. So um, if, if we have there something people can work off of, let's start at the beginning and make small changes. This is not worth spending everything so it sounds perfect, but somebody talked about implementation agreement. Somebody talked, I think Dan mentioned, well, something's not there that should be there. So let's just make it as robust as possible so everybody understands with absolute clarity what goes on after you leave this room. So it's what we have a little bit of room to comfort with. So 
So I guess the third from last sentence to the bottom, Coquitlam will bring forward the agreements in RGS for council consideration tentatively on July 18th. Um, that may be a little ambitious. I think it would be the, the implementation agreement. Uh, it probably could be for council on that date. Uh, I don't think the RGS, but we, we do have a, a meeting with the subsequent agreement on the 25th for the agreement. So I think we should come and put July 18th and the 25th. Uh, on that point, I think, um, again, for us to make a recommendation, staff make a recommendation to Council to consider acceptance of the ERGS, um, Council will want to have a finalized, uh, signed on implementation agreement. It's going to happen. Um, 
So I think that once I report out on the progress of this meeting, the province knows that I'm done. It's it's over to staff to 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 tie this up and get it done. Am I right about that? No, if you wanted to only back in, I'm not suggesting anybody does. Yeah, no, some, I, I, of course I'm going, to, I'm going to monitor what goes on here, but I think my formal role after this, I've signed up for two more meetings. You've got an outcome here. I'm to report on outcomes. There's been a report that everybody gets that, that tracks each of these things. I will include that in it. And uh, I think that, that does it for me unless I get called back in here, which as nice as it is to work with all of you, I'm busy and it's a summer to be enjoyed. Yeah. If I could then, maybe on that note, uh, unless there's a hiccup, we need to come back together and we need to your, uh, your assistance and services. Um, I hope that won't be the case. Uh, we can get ourselves to the finish line here. Um, and then uh, I'll, I'll make note, that I will let you know at that time personally so we, we can talk. And um, just to thank you for your, uh, your efforts and services uh, to this process. Okay. Well, I thank you all for your good work and I wish you well. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much for board and uh, our committee and staff. Uh, thank you very much for assessing us through this uh, uh, rather uh, interesting process. Interesting. That was the word I was going to use. I want to also thank uh, Coquitlam for uh, coming forward and getting the best shot we can. And I guess we'll, we'll see what happens with the, with the council as to where we went and next week to the after. And I uh, wish you well with that because um, I know the board would be very happy if we could uh, finalize this agreement, um, uh, it will be quite a story and we want to make sure that everybody is happy with it. So thank you very much. Thank you. All right. <laughs>